Pulls up for three. Boom! Knocks it down. Curry from the corner at three. Puts it in. For overtime. Makes it. Go! Welcome to the MVP cast. This week, a slightly unconventional edition. It's the NBA season tipping off on the small hours of Wednesday morning. Of course, a big week for the league, a new television deal for the UK and Ireland with Sky Sports. But to look ahead to this season, we heard on an interview with a bunch of media from the ESPN analysts, the brilliant duo of Jeff Van Gundy and Mark Jackson, answering a bunch of questions about different issues around the NBA. We're going to give you a listen. Of course, if you want to subscribe to us on a regular basis, you can do so via iTunes, via Stitcher, or go to our website at mvp247.com. But first up, let's hear Jeff and Mark talking about the league. And first of all, a question about Chicago and just how important it is overall to the health of the NBA that the Bills have some kind of renaissance. Um, This is Mark, and I think... Obviously, the league is at its best when these big market teams are relevant and good. Uh, we remember those days. Um, I think Chicago is a young, talented team um, headed in the right direction. Uh, and I think in the Eastern Conference, they're more than capable capable of being a playoff team when healthy and whole. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. I think they're close. Uh but I, I, it's no secret that the league is at its best when, you know, these teams in major markets um, are playing good, solid basketball and they're relevant. Yeah, and for me, it's, it's Jeff. It's it's amazing to me uh, how viewership of TV and um, and all that has been so great. When the Lakers have been bad for a while, the Knicks have have struggled. The Nets. Uh, have really struggled and Chicago over the last couple of years has been in a downturn. Um, to me, it's, it's been, uh, it's fascinating how they're the, the, the NBA popularity is still, you know, growing. And then I think, uh, from a Chicago standpoint, I think they've made, uh, some good moves and, and there are some moves that you have to wait and see, you know, will the Zach Levine contract, proved to be uh, a, a great decision. Um, Lori Markinen looks to be a, a terrific player. So that looks like to be a, a good draft choice. Um, I think Bobby Portis has outperformed uh, where he has drafted. He continues to be a, a really good six man candidate. And uh, so I think they've done some really good things and some things you just have to wait and see. But the one thing rebuilding is hard. And it's hard to get good again. We've seen that with Chicago in the past. Uh, after Jordan, they they thought it was going to be quick, and it was absolutely painful. Hi, guys. Uh, Mark, I'm not asking you this because we discussed part of this in Las Vegas. So two things for Jeff. Do you put the heat in a tier with the Washingtons, Milwaukee's, Indiana's behind, you know, Boston, Philly, Toronto, or do you say Miami is not as good as those teams, Washington, Milwaukee, Indy? And, Jeff, also on, on Jimmy Butler, would you, if you were the Heat, trade multiple of their appealing young assets for him, you know, meaning out of bio, Richardson, Olenek, uh, Justice Winslow, guys of that ilk? Jeff? Um, uh, the first question is uh, I, I put them as definitely a playoff team. If they traded for someone as talented as Butler is, uh, then I would put them in that next group. The one thing about Miami, I think Miami has more, they have like stuff you can count on, um, depth, great defense, move the ball. They just aren't as uh, talented as the teams you mentioned, um, you know, in that other tier. So, you know, could they get there? Yeah. Uh, I I would feel better about their chances if they made, you know, an impactful trade. And as far as would I do it, you know, obviously everything, you you don't, you'd have to know the specifics of a trade to say I would or wouldn't do a specific thing. But the idea to trade for Jimmy Butler, uh, yeah, I like that idea for Miami. 
Hi, if I can get both of you guys sort of to follow up on that a little bit. Obviously, Jimmy Butler is an all-star talent, but we're also talking possibly about a five-year deal that takes him out to 34 years old. If you were a general manager, would you have any consternation about paying a 34 or 35-year-old player $43 million? So how do you sort of look at, at the spectrum of that trade when considering that the five-year extension or new contract Jimmy will get next summer? Well, this is Mark, and I think that's the uh... – you know the hundred thousand dollar question. Um, it's it's not Jimmy Butler today and what he's worth. It's if you give him that extension at thirty four years old, making that kind of money, uh, it can really you know handcuff your franchise. And those are the tough decisions that you 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 boil it down to whether the trade is worth it or not. Um, he's certainly a, a heck of a basketball player, and he's going to help them today. Um, that, that, that really makes it, it tough. And if I was a general manager, I'd try to meet somewhere halfway where I'm not paying that kind of money when he's 34 years old. And Jeff, your thoughts? This is Jeff. Yeah. Uh, I'm not at all convinced that every team like Miami, I, I'm not convinced that they would do that. Um, I'm not convinced, um, you know, like people would say, well, they, uh, Houston did it for Chris Paul, but I think uh, Houston, two things, Houston was is is and was closer to a championship uh, than Miami. And secondarily, I think Chris Paul is going to go down as one of the, you know, all time greats. Um, so I'm not I'm not convinced that every team that will trade or the team that ultimately trades for Jimmy Butler will feel necessary. Uh, to give him five years, I, I, I really do think there will be negotiations. I don't. I think the only team that's committed to paying him five years right now would be the team that has him. Oh, hi, Jeff and Mark. Um, I'm uh, I'm from Australia, obviously, and uh, it's there's a lot of hype about the game over here at the moment because of the influx of Australians in the league. And I'm interested in um, both your takes on. The Aussie guys like Ben Simmons and Joe Ingles and Dante Exum and, um, you know, what their impact on the league has been and whether any of their teams can actually challenge the Warriors for the title. Well, this is Mark, and I think um, the impact is, you know, has been outstanding. Uh, the talent of all three of those guys, especially led by Ben Simmons, I think he's a, you know, he's a generational talent, you know, what he does on the basketball floor. Um, he came – with uh, expectations on him from day one, and he has not disappointed uh, and continues to get better and better. I thought he had an, an outstanding year last year, and he's going to build on it. Uh, Exum is about being healthy, <clears throat> playing very well. I expect a great season from him, being healthy and whole, tremendous size, tremendous athletic ability, and in a, and in a great system. And with Angles, he just knows how to play. Uh, dangerous player, smart player. Um, remember him starting with the Clippers and having an opportunity. And now in Utah, um, uh, that, that's a heck of a basketball team. I really think Utah and, and Philadelphia, out of those, 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 both of those teams, are more than more than capable of advancing in the in the playoffs and, and having long runs. They're that good. Yeah, and I, I want to echo what Mark said about uh, Exum. I really don't know very much about him. His his time in the NBA has been so choppy due to injury. It's hard to see uh, all that he's capable of doing. Hopefully this is the year that he, he can be healthy and play, you know, a long productive year. I love Joe Ingles. Uh, I think Joe Ingles is a tremendous glue player, uh, terrific shooter, passer, defender, um, uh, what a pickup by Utah, and I know the Clippers, you know, regret waving him back a few years ago. Um, and then Ben Simmons, you know, everyone wants to focus on what Ben Simmons can't do, which is shoot, and try to rush him into being a range shooter. And I, I think uh, Simmons and Philadelphia have done a good job in focusing on what he does great uh, versus what he doesn't do as well. And uh, I think that's hard to do with all the critiques that you get as a player. But I think it's been very wise by both Simmons and uh, Philly. I think Utah is 
the third best team in the West. Uh, and I think Philly, um, everybody talks Toronto. They talk Boston as the top two teams in the East. Uh, but if Philly plays well, they don't have to take a back seat to anyone. Fantastic. Do, do you think any of them can knock over the Warriors? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, thanks, Mike. <laughs> um, hi. E- even with their best player on the shelf indefinitely, do you guys feel that Knicks fans should be optimistic about the right leadership being in place now, president, GM, coach? I mean, do you think they are headed in the right direction or at least have the guys that can point them that way? The Knicks – so much has been made. I've always thought the coaches have been good, right? I mean, so much of the coaches, uh, how well you do is is based strictly on the roster, okay? So I think Dave Fis- David Fisdale is very good. Um, and if he has a good roster, they'll have a good team. If he has a mediocre roster, they'll have a mediocre team. Um, so I don't look at it as like changing coaches uh, is – the most important part to improvement. I think who picks the players is absolutely critical to your success or lack of success. And, you know, they've had, you know, some spotty things go, you know, in the last, you know, three, four years, whatever it is, as far as picking players, um, both in the draft and free agent. Um, so right now, I don't think you can expect them uh, to have a quick fix. You know, Porzingis' health and improvement, it's not just his health. He's got to get better uh, to be a best player on a really good team. And then they have to supplement their, their talent. When you look on the floor right now, even if they had Porzingis, um, Knox has, has got a chance. Um, but, like, you look at their team, they're, they're just not a talented team. Now, I like Cantor. I think he was a tremendous trade. Uh, trade. I'm interested to see if they can sign him or will sign him. Um, but I think he's a, he's a very good player, but um, their backcourt needs some shoring up. And this is Mark. Um, I think in the Eastern Conference, after you look at the top teams um, that obviously will you know, make the playoffs and have home court, I think it boils down looking at the rest of the, the conference, which teams are committed, which teams defend at a high level, which teams don't take night or possessions off, and those teams will have an opportunity to sneak into the playoffs. Uh, That's been proven. There's clearly some teams that are better than the other ones in the East, but if you play hard, you compete, you defend, and you buy in. Um, And the Knicks are one of those teams. They have an opportunity to show growth and uh, be chasing a playoff spot. Good evening, Mark, and good evening, Jeff. Um, Two-part question. The first one being San Antonio Spurs. They had a really tough season. Now looking ahead um, ahead of this season, what impact will they have, if any at all? And what players do you think will be a standout players this season? And then also, why is it important for the NBA to be you know, collaborating with people like the EuroLeague when it comes to the, the growth of basketball globally? especially looking at talents like Luca coming into the league and making an impact straight away so far in the summer league. Well, this is Mark, and I think the Spurs, I think they will be the Spurs. Uh, we expect them to play hard, compete, uh, win ball games. I expect them to be uh, balanced for home court. Um, you look at that roster and you look at the age and you say how, but we've been saying that for quite a while. Pop finds a way to get the best out of his guys. They're a talented team. They added some some youth. Uh, I think the injury at the point guard position hurts them. I expect White to be back soon, and I expect him to be playing, you know, great basketball when he does come back. And I expect the Spurs also to be on on the hunt for uh, help at the point guard position until he comes back uh, to add depth. But that's a team that's talented. They know how to win. They know how to defend. Um, I think Rudy Gay will have a have a, a very good year for them. I thought last year he was bouncing back from injury, but I think this year he'll play more minutes and show his true versatility. Uh, as far as your second question, um, I didn't really hear it all, but this is truly a worldwide league. They've done a great job of of uh, getting talent from all across this world, and not just talent just to be sitting on the end of the bench, but home run talent 
and uh, it's exciting to see and a great time for the league. And this is Jeff. Um, last year, the Spurs won 47. Kawhi Leonard only played uh, uh, nine games, I believe. And so I think uh, by getting DeRozan and getting Pirtle for Leonard, um, I think that's a huge upgrade uh, from where they were last year uh, without Leonard. Uh, so I think uh, offensively they'll be fine. I think defensively losing Leonard and losing uh, Danny Green and uh, losing Kyle Anderson, I, I think there's going to be some struggles there on some nights. Um, with Murray hurt and Derek White hurt, you know, their top two point guards are sort of converting a smallish two guard in Bryn Forbes to the starting point guard. I'm interested to see how that works because he's a very, very good shooter. Um, but I, I think like Mark, I, even though they have some defensive question marks, I have no doubt they're going to play hard, smart and together. And when you do that in the NBA, uh, with the goal being about the team versus about the individuals, you can overcome at times more talented teams that aren't as committed to doing things together. As far as the European uh, players or the non-Americans, to me, it's not just the, the Europeans. Um, as Mark mentioned, there are players all over the world now, and uh, our league is so much better uh, for – going out there and finding the very best players worldwide uh, because their skill level, their talent, and uh, as important, their commitment to the team uh, makes the NBA a better place. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Mark. I uh, just had uh, kind of two questions here. I'm wondering, what do you think LeBron James needs to do with the Lakers this upcoming season for you each to consider it a successful campaign? Because he's had this you know, finals or bust mentality for years now, but I'm assuming that mentality changes a bit this year. So what does he need to do for it to be a successful season in his eyes? And secondly, um, you know, I think we can obviously all agree we're not going to have a Cleveland-Golden State matchup for the first time in a, a number of years. Um, but is there any reason that anyone should not expect the Warriors to be back and have a very familiar ending to uh, to this season? Well, this is Jeff. Uh... I'm not sure how James would consider it a success. To me, all a player or a team can do is play, you know, as hard as they can together uh, with a level of intelligence. Um, the other teams have an impact on how many games you win. So I'm not sure how he would consider it a success. Um, but as a coach, that's how, if I was coaching him, that's how I would consider it a success. You know, did we give what we had, uh, to the process. Um, I think uh, as far as Golden State, if you gave me a, you can take the field or you can bet Golden State, I'd bet Golden State. Um, I was sure they would win last year until there was 20 games to go. Then I thought Houston would get them, and I still think they would have if Paul hadn't gotten hurt. But uh, going into this year, if Golden State is into it and – which they really weren't last year in the regular season and still won 58 games. Um, if they're into it, uh, they're by far the best team with the best talent and will win. And this is Mark. Um, to answer your second question, first, um, Golden State is the clear-cut favorite. I'm in agreement with Jeff. I do think in this league anything can happen. So there's some teams in the Western Conference, if clicking right, if healthy, uh, injuries plays plays a role not just for the Warriors but throughout this league so that can play a part in it but the Warriors are the clear-cut favorite to answer the LeBron part I think it's about the improvement that the Lakers show uh the continuing to to to, to, to develop I think the goal is to win a championship like the you know there is a handful of teams in this league you have the best player in the world that's the goal uh is it realistic I'm not sure but uh, to show improvement, to show growth, and uh, it's a win already because the Lakers are once again re relevant. Now it's about developing winning habits and uh, progressing towards that march. Right. Thanks so much for the, taking the call. Um, Jeff, you spoke earlier about Ben Simmons shooting, and, and Mark, I was just wondering if you wanted to add to that as well because um, it seemed like 
smart coaches like uh, Brad Stevens last year in the playoffs sort of took advantage of that and um, really crowded the 76ers shooters. Um, can you talk about Ben's development? Can he rise to that level if he's not going to be able to shoot? Well, to me, it's it's just about continuing to put the time in and become a better shooter than he, than he is already. He's shown the incredible talent. He's shown an incredible uh, commitment to uh, competing at a high level, and I'm sure he's going to become a better shooter. Um, I think you can nitpick as a coach or as a fan and say what a guy can't do as opposed to looking uh, at the great way he impacts the game and puts you in position to win night in and night out. So I wouldn't overreact to it. Uh, they surrounded him with, with great shooting last year. They still have very good shooting this year. And I think it's, it's, it's you know, that team was a, a, a call away from, you know, winning on the road in the playoffs. I wouldn't overreact. They're, they're in great position, and the future's awfully bright. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And for both men, uh, the Jimmy Butler situation here, has, has, has it sullied his reputation, so to speak, where he is as a player, wherever he may go? And how much will this have an impact on the Timberwolves in terms of cohesiveness, playing this year with all this going on, especially since he has not been traded yet? Well, this is Mark. Um, it's going to have an impact without question. We've already seen that. Uh, it's awfully tough to have situations like they're having right now and not a, in, not a, not allow it to impact your team. So that's the concern. They're still talented enough to win games, uh, but it, it it wears on you. And I think the quicker they make a decision, the better off they'll be down the road uh, moving forward. Will it hurt Jimmy Butler? Um, I think it has hurt him. It is that it has hurt him to an extent thus far. But at the end of the day, you win in this league with talent. Without question, he's a you know he's a high level talent in this league, and uh, someone will benefit from his presence in the lineup. But it does wear on you as a basketball team, and the concern is, will this you know mess up the, the Timberwolves' uh, growth from last year and their development moving forward? And I agree with Mark. I think um, I think it's had a huge negative impact on uh, Minnesota already. If you look at their performance in the preseason, uh, uh, it's been overwhelmingly uh, poor. And I think they're caught in a quandary. Um, I don't think uh, people are giving them uh, good trade options. They're trying to bully them into taking a bad deal. If they did that, that would set their franchise back years. Um, if they keep him and he's not all in, which he's, he seemingly is not, uh, from what you hear, uh, then that, too, is a uh, bad option. So, to me, right now, they have uh, they don't have any, uh, any good options on the table unless somebody comes uh, up and decides, uh, from what I've read about these offers, right, to make a reasonable offer. The offers I've seen in the in the papers, and again, I don't know how true they are, but um, uh, they're certainly underwhelming. Okay. Uh, yes, I would. I, I would like to ask to to Jeff something about Danilo Gallinari, and for example, how would you coach now after all the injuries he had? if you think that small forward can be still his uh, most effective position or if he should move to the power forward, and how do you see his, his evolution as, as a player uh, through the years? And just a curiosity to Mark Jackson, uh, Coach Larry Brown, uh, now he is in Italy, and what do you think about this, this, this kind of experience and what do you think about him at 78 years old being still a coach being sealed with that kind of uh, will to improve and learn something, not only to teach. Thanks. Um, as far as Gallinari, uh, I think he's paired with a good forward in uh, with the Clippers in Tobias Harris. They're bo both more three, four men, like uh, you know, small forwards and power forwards, which is a incredibly important position. I think Gallinari is so big uh, that he offensively poses such matchup problems uh, for their opponents. 
Uh, so I, I think he's a terrific offensive player when healthy. I just think, unfortunately, injuries uh, have been a struggle, and he has some defensive uh, challenges. Uh, but offensively, terrific player that you're right, I think will morph more into a power forward as he plays longer and longer than at the small forward position due to his lateral quickness, uh, lateral quickness challenges. And, uh, but he's a very good player. And this is Mark to answer your question about Coach Brown. Um, I did read something recently where he was coming back home for health issues, just uh, for some surgery, uh, just thinking about him and praying for him and hope everything's fine. But everybody that knows him knows that he's a, he's a life as far as a basketball coach. And, you know, uh, the basketball mind, it was a privilege for me to play for him a couple of times. He's a Hall of Famer. Uh, class act that's passionate about the game of basketball and has a gift to be able to teach the game. So I think it keeps them young, and I think it's a benefit for anybody that has the has the privilege of having Larry Brown be the head coach. Uh, hello again, and good, good morning, uh, Jeff and uh, Mark. I'd like to expand on Gallo's question and more make it more about the Clippers. Do you think that they have enough to be able to uh, make a run to the playoffs? And also, what do you think are the different tiers with regards to the Eastern and Western Conference? Well, this is Mark. I think they, they're they a team that, to me, they're a sleeper team. Uh, they have veteran guys. They have an outstanding coach. Uh, they've, they've added pieces. They play extremely hard. Um, they're versatile. Um, and, 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 and they have the ability to, to defend uh, and, and make plays around the floor. They can score at different positions. So I think they, they have an opportunity to be a playoff team. I would not be surprised uh, building off of their preseason. I like the way that they've, they've played. They've experienced success. It'll be very interesting to see when the lights are on, if they can continue to, to progress. But I, I see them as a team that's more than capable of making it in the playoffs. And this is Jeff. I echo that. I, I think the Clippers, I like how they play. They play with great energy, passion. I like their team. Whether that translates into being a playoff team, it's hard to say due to how many good teams there are in the Western Conference. Well, that was Mark Jackson and Jeff Van Gundy talking about the new NBA season. If you want to see a preview of that, you can head to MVP247.com. We can also get all the archives of our previous podcast just go to the site and click on the podcast page we'll have much more interviews over the next few weeks with other folk around british basketball if you like us tell your friends you can subscribe of course on itunes on stitcher or access all the editions of the podcast via mvp247.com if you get any feedback you want to get in touch you can tweet me at mark Britbull. but for me mark woods for now it's goodbye